It's the first day of the football season. Cardiff, more than many cities, is touched by its darker side. We seem to see a re-emergence of thuggery. You get damage to property, you get injuries, people are injured. There's contact between uh, the Cardiff supporters and those visiting. And they will arrange to meet, uh, and, and almost battle lines are drawn. If you come into Cardiff, then you're coming into Wales, you're coming into, into their area, and they're very tribal about stuff like that, you know, because people have got an affinity to that club because it's the focal point of their community. It, that represents them because of the numbers they've got. I mean, if everyone is wary of going down to Cardiff. Ninian Park, the home of Cardiff City Football Club. A small, hardcore group of hooligans here, the Soul Crew, have one of the worst reputations in the country. Cardiff's season in the second division starts against Wickham Wanderers. The vast majority of Cardiff supporters are friendly and well behaved, though travelling fans get a fair amount of abuse. After Cardiff take the lead, much of the shouting is directed at the away supporters. The uh, passion of, uh, of support uh, is intense. It's, it's something you can't describe. The atmosphere, sometimes people say, is electric. Uh, and that is the way it, it is in, at Ninian Park. But there's intensity, um, and there's that point which it moves beyond intensity into hatred. Um, and that, unfortunately, can happen at Cardiff from time to time. Within hours, some will look for trouble with fans from bigger clubs. Nearby, Cardiff's Millennium Stadium is hosting the Charity Shield match between Manchester United and Liverpool the next day. And some Manchester United fans are already arriving. As Cardiff are still playing, Manchester fans take over one of the Cardiff supporters' pubs. Using hidden cameras, we set out to see what will happen. Are you still supporting today? I'm Cardiff. No, I'm not Cardiff, man. It's my new in with Cardiff supporters excluded, United fans are jubilant. But some local fans don't like it. They're now crowded around another pub, the Borough, just around the corner. Among them are known hooligans, members of Cardiff's soul crew. Suddenly, a mob of United fans leave, apparently trying to reach the Cardiff fans. Cardiff run towards them. Police attempt to keep them apart by pinning back the United fans. Cardiff are now mobbed into one large group. There's nothing like that indescribable buzz when it's something it's just about to go off. Unless you've been there and in, involved in it, it's very difficult to explain and to understand.
they're chanting Soul Crew, now believed to be one of the biggest hooligan groups in the country. As the police try to regroup, there appear to be people coming from all sides. Officers are being pushed to their limits. Some Cardiff fans are on the hunt for anyone from across the border. I can smell fucking English. Smell her? It's the smell of fucking English. Others have confronted the United fans who are being escorted away by police. We had it with 20 on this now. We're running back in the escort like two shit. When you have come out, give it a fucking stud there, like we went over to them, bang bang, they were gone. Run back into the escort like funny as fuck. Football violence soon melts into the sort of Saturday night trouble known to most British towns and city centres. By now, the Cardiff fans have returned to their pub, the Borough. Another match day is over. This is a South Wales police football intelligence sheet. It focuses on people they associate with Cardiff hooliganism. Most of these men have several football-related convictions. Some were present during the trouble that weekend. But most of those who were involved aren't even known to the police. This is the main website for the Soul Cruise activities. The site offers advice for those who get arrested. The links page gives you access to a world of hooligan sites run and followed by a network of people across England, Wales and beyond from very different professions. Back home, most of those involved in the trouble melted away. But Cardiff City couldn't ignore what had happened. Just on the corner there. Pull away, die. Pull away, die. Finish it's it. striker, a former Wales under-21, Di Thomas, had been recognized in Brussels. He was under pressure to explain his involvement. He denied any part in the events. His spokesman even said he was nowhere near them. It was only when footage from Belgium was later released, showing Thomas being disorderly and ripping up fencing, that Cardiff City fined him £3,000 and suspended him. He never played for the club again. Anis Abraham, the millionaire who travelled to Brussels with Thomas, was also shown among the rioters. Abraham was a well-known local businessman with a passion for Cardiff City. He and his family's businesses were worth millions, and he had a comfortable lifestyle to show for it. He'd once offered to help buy a player for the club. But police had also regularly seen Abraham at matches with convicted hooligans. He is a, a well-known figure. He has been on the scene in Cardiff uh, for a long, long time. Um, and again, um, uh, has in the past been present um, when violence has taken place. Now, there's no evidence to suggest he's directly involved uh, in that violence. Uh, but his presence uh, continually up until uh, last season... I must say, it's, it's questionable. Like Thomas, Abraham denied being involved in the trouble. He said, if I was throwing punches, then I should be banned, but I wasn't doing anything. Cardiff City, who may not have seen the footage, took no action. But Abraham had been present at several points in the rioting. He was gassed in the Fiacre bar, where he tried to avoid the cameras and arrest. He wasn't arrested, but was taken briefly to hospital. Within months of Euro 2000, Cardiff City had a new owner, one with a unique approach to hooliganism. 
Sam Hamam was a Lebanese-born property developer. When Sam Hamam arrived in Carter, it, it, was, um, it was interesting because, of course, it meant investment. Here was a man who was going to invest substantial sums of money uh, in a, what was an alien football club. Hamam, who had once owned Wimbledon Football Club, seemed as at home among supporters as in the boardroom. His style when meeting fans was unorthodox. We tell everyone we're fucking sheep shaggers. <laughs> sheep shaggers, sheep, sheep, sheep shaggers. Yeah. Hey, you fucking bastards, you want to keep spending my money until, until I'm fucked. Hamam started to befriend other prominent supporters. At a fans meeting attended by at least one band hooligan, Hamam is seen here with Anis Abraham. They're discussing going on to a local nightclub. We saw the pictures from uh, Brussels and, uh, and we saw uh, Anis's involvement in what was happening there. Um, and it was a uh, concern of ours uh, that the um, owner, uh, a very prominent owner uh, of a football club, so should be seen to be so closely associated uh, with someone who has, um, if not directly, uh, indirectly, connections uh, with those responsible for football violence. Sam Hamam soon travelled across South Wales, meeting fans who were directly involved in violence. He said this was part of a new approach to try to rid the club of hooliganism by reaching out to the perpetrators. He said of hooligans, you have to get into somebody's mind. A lot of those people have reasons why they behave the way they do. He's spoken of taming hooligans with love and hugs. Bring me the biggest nutter, he said, and I will change him. And he didn't just talk. He gave some jobs. Sam Hamam's new head of personal security was a convicted football hooligan. We can't name him for legal reasons. But Hamam's policy of trying to reform hooligans raised serious concerns. He believes in rehabilitation. I'm not against that. I think that's got its proper place. But to bring people who have clearly been involved, directly and indirectly, uh, in football hooliganism into the heart of a football club is really, in my view, uh, almost endorsing their behavior. And the club had an odd response to police requests for help. Stoke City's ground, the Britannia Stadium. A month before Euro 2000, Cardiff fans rioted in some of the worst football disorder in years. Now under Sam Hammam, Cardiff City refused police requests to publish sheets of suspects in their match day programmes. Meetings are arranged that, that were either delayed or postponed. Um, there seemed to be a reluctance on the part of the club um, to step into the spotlight and condemn what had happened uh, at Stoke. Uh, in fact, at one stage it was suggested by the club that much of the trouble was actually caused by the police themselves uh, in overzealous policing. But the club was prepared to help others. This was a suggestion uh, by the club that they would in fact provide um, legal assistance and legal representation for anybody who was arrested um, as a result of the inquiry at Stoke. I was entirely flabbergasted by that. Now that's not to say that all were guilty, but I'm sure that the in identifying individuals are very clear, unequivocal uh, video evidence of those individuals engaged in, in acts of violence. So the club's response was it, to the least surprising. Around 70 Cardiff supporters received bans from this one match. The club currently has almost 100 bans, the highest in the football league. We couldn't meet Cardiff City's conditions for giving us an interview, but the club has said it would publish pictures of suspected hooligans if police agreed to be liable for any complaints. Because of these concerns, Stoke Police say they printed a separate sheet, but Cardiff never put it in their match programmes. By the end of last season, Hamam had brought Abraham and another face known to the police into the heart of the club, John Simmons. Simmons has previous convictions, though not football related. 
This is police footage of him goading rival supporters. Having just won promotion to Division 2, Simmons and Abraham took part in a special coach trip to see a match against Mansfield Town. A man posed on board with the Soul Crew. The pictures were posted on a Soul Crew website under the heading Sam and the Boys, with all faces except Hamam's hidden. The coaches stopped off at this hotel near Mansfield. Inside, Hamam posed again with the group. The reception was reported as another attempt by Hamam to improve hooligan behaviour. He said he was proud to travel with the Soul Crew. I don't think we should court these people in providing them with coaches to travel away to, uh, to games, um, to provide them with entertainment, to provide them with alcohol, for example. Uh, I think that's going too far. And again, it's open to, to much misinterpretation, not just by us the, in terms of policing and, and the other authorities, but by the other supporters themselves. I know that many of the supporters in Cardiff are very unhappy uh, in what Sam Haman did there. And Haman's attempts to reform hooligans with champagne had mixed results. Among those present, Di Thomas, the ex-footballer, John Simmons's son Lee and others who have all since been convicted. John Simmons too is hardly reformed. We've secretly filmed him on the hunt for trouble at matches. Here he's at Wrexham, part of a group pushed back by police dogs as it tries to reach the Wrexham fans. The same group then chants Soul Crew at rival hooligans. To many hooligans, whether in Brussels, Oldham or elsewhere, the lure of violence once experienced is intense. And at Cardiff City, it was to test Sam Hamam's policy of rehabilitation in a very public way. The Cardiff City hooligans, the Soul Crew, have continued to be active this season. We filmed undercover as a hundred or so were escorted by police to a match at Bristol City. Abuse was hurled at rival fans. And some were organising a fight with the Bristol hooligans. And you've got 20 boys on your right hand side. So have a look, say have a look, just say have a look. For some, the match at Bristol City's ground was simply a brief lull before the coming fight. What followed was depressingly inevitable. Watching nearby was one of Hamam's associates, Anis Abraham, the millionaire seen throwing a punch in Brussels. His colleague had just been in the fray. He commented on the night's events. You're creating an atmosphere where serious problems can develop. And it's no accident that since Euro 2000, some of the most serious incidents on, this, on the mainland of Britain have been with Cardiff City Football Club, and that the largest number of hooligans that can be turned out probably sometimes is Cardiff City Football Club. It's the weekend after Christmas, and Bristol City fans have travelled to Cardiff's ground for the return match. Inside Ninian Park, the atmosphere was heated. <laughs> Cardiff fans threw coins and bottles filled with urine. Missiles were thrown back. There are missiles being thrown uh, throughout the game, and, and, and I'm not naive enough to know that we weren't um, uh, dispatching some ourselves or throwing back what came. Um, but again, uh, speaking to, to, to the fans that were there, um, they, they felt they were under constant uh, barrage of missiles. Cardiff went 3-1 down. Oh, and the atmosphere became more vicious. On, 
Cardiff fans broke up chairs to throw at the Bristol supporters. Then hurled racist abuse. Yeah, 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 you motherfucker. <laughs> but the Cardiff City stewards ignored both criminal offences. Instead, they shared jokes with one supporter about throwing chairs. Yes, yes. At the end of the match, Cardiff hooligans invited their Bristol counterparts to fight outside. You don't go to any uh, away ground where there's rivalry between the teams without expecting a few insults. That, that goes with the patch, but this went beyond that in, in a large way. And the sheer volume of coins, and then in the car park, the stones that were, were thrown around. Police tried to clear the car park, but a mob confronted them. Put your sticks down! Come on. Let's fucking have it! At the front, chanting Soul Crew, was Di Thomas, the former Cardiff City footballer turned hooligan. And the Cardiff hooligans weren't afraid to attack the police. A vicious battle followed. A club photographer was knocked unconscious. Some fans tried to help him. He's not a fucking old Bill, you twat! Fighting spilled into the streets. Bottles and bricks were hurled. Around a hundred cars were damaged. But apart from our own, there were no TV cameras, so the events were never reported. Just a week later, the national press did descend on Ninian Park to see Leeds United, then top of the Premier League, play Cardiff in the FA Cup. Hammam seemed delighted the match was being played at Cardiff's ground, comparing its atmosphere to others notorious for violence. It's uh, better for us to play them at Ninian because the uh, intimidatory factor will be so big. It's a huge, huge advantage. I mean, any team that come here will tell you uh, what the atmosphere is like. It's, uh, it's a bit like the old den at Millwall except ten times more. If that's what he said, that's just totally irresponsible. Somebody like that after making those comments uh, and after seeing what's happened shouldn't be allowed to work in football if, there's, if there are if there is uh, any justice in the world then he's just totally undermined all the hard work, difficult work done by all the good football clubs and there are plenty of those um, uh, and encouraged a lot of the worst part of football to think hey we're alright now we're being supported on match day, many Leeds fans had little idea what awaited them. As soon as we got in there, I could hear screaming, shouting. It was just a complete atmosphere of tension, that's why I put it. It was just horrible. Before kick-off, Hammam went to the visiting supporters end with his bodyguard, the convicted hooligan. He raised a placard saying, Welcome Leeds. Coins were thrown back. Some Cardiff fans hurled abuse. The Cardiff fans are extremely close to us as well. I thought, oh, I don't like this. This is a bit scary. And also, within minutes, there was things being thrown. We had coins coming over and bottles and all sorts of things. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, they're going to stop that in a minute. They're going to go in and they're going to stop it. But they didn't. There was just, there was bottles coming over, screwed up tin cans like this. So they were very sharp. They were being thrown. They were, I mean, I got hit at least five times by coins. After an early Leeds goal, Cardiff equalised. Leeds fans were pelted with bottles and coins, as was the referee. The match was briefly stopped. One man came over to us with a little boy. He said, I'm being hit from that side. I said, well, don't stand next to me because I've been hit at least five times. 
And he said, well, what am I going to do? This little boy was really crying. He was upset. He was terrified. And into this maelstrom, Hammam stepped forward again, walking past the Leeds fans with his bodyguard. Again, he was pelted. With minutes to go, Cardiff scored their winning goal. An incredible act of giant killing. Some Leeds hooligans attempted to break out of the ground to confront Cardiff supporters. But the police line held. Cardiff fans wanted to join their chairman on the pitch. When the final whistle went, we could see all the Cardiff fans just jumping over the fences, jumping over the barriers. And then finally they opened the gates and just let them out. Many went straight for the Leeds end. A mass brawl with Leeds fans was only averted by the fact that Ninian Park still has fencing. And by a forceful police intervention. It was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. All sorts of kids crying, screaming. It was just terrifying. As missiles flew between both sides, Outside, some children could be seen leaving in tears. The Leeds fans were furious. And once again, the tension threatened to spill into more violence. Others had more serious injuries. She was just going to get on the bus, I was at the first bus, a brick come and smashed her on there. That happened to Leeds, we'll be kicked out of the league. But you're a joke. If this is Cardiff, if this is hospitality, shove it up your ass. One radio reporter tried to interview Sam Hammam. I wanted to know what he thought of the scenes on the final whistle, and it became pretty clear at the start of that interview that he didn't wish to condemn that behaviour. I challenged him on this and continued to challenge him throughout the course of the interview. When Sam Hammam closed the interview after I'd interrupted him for the final time, he took my tape recorder, gave it to one of his security officials, who then ushered me down the tunnel. When I got to the entrance to reception, I was grabbed by my coat and flung quite forcefully out of the gates of Ninian Park. Five days after the match, and still stung by the mass media outcry, Hammam called a meeting of the club's core supporters. In the audience, Anis Abraham the millionaire and John Simmons. Cardiff City's owner was here to rally the troops. All this media campaign, this, this violence and evil and lying, and the media trying to come after the club and, and after me. Has this been good for the club? It has been great. He accepted that his club had a hooligan problem and that Cardiff fans who threw missiles should be rooted out. But he felt the media had unfairly singled out the club, that the Leeds fans were worse. He turned it into low comedy. There were a lot of empty uh, plastic bottles. One threw a cigarette lighter. And one threw his fucking shoes. <laughs> Can they charge us with anything? With what? And if they say there was virus and I incited virus, I'm asking you, what fucking virus? Who hit who after the game? Who fought who? There was no virus. I didn't incite anything. These people are will come, they are waiting for us. Now, we, we have been set up. It, 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 then he referred to John Simmons, known as Simo. We should be whiter than white. Just as an example. Simon, where are you, Simon? He's going to join the carol, he's going to start singing Christmas carols. Don't sing anyway. Hamam tacitly acknowledged Simon's role in trouble by asking him to keep his nose clean from now on. At the end, the club's chief executive is filmed in deep discussion with John Simmons and with Anas Abraham. The next day, Sam Hammam went on the offensive, launching what he described as his war on violence at the club. Some are not convinced. 
Thank you for coming. I need to get right. What I am saying is that's the words. Where's the action? Uh, and in my experience, in the time I was here in Cardiff, I saw very little action, albeit sometimes a few words. Where does Samalan come in from? Um, what is his view? I mean, why, why is he so closely involved with these groups? Cardiff City has condemned hooliganism on several occasions, mainly after the Leeds match when it launched a fans charter to report, then banned for life, those seen throwing objects inside the ground. But this spring, at the official Cardiff Club shop, you can buy a copy of a new book. It's a historical celebration of the Cardiff hooligans to Soul Crew. Have you got a copy of the uh, Soul Crew book? No. At first it's hard to get, but the book is available from the manager. How much is it? Eight. So why are you standing behind the counter then? What's that? It's not, you know, it's a good read. I've had a read of it. Nothing, yeah. nothing heavy, but uh, well, it's just the club don't want to be seen to be selling that type of thing because it glorifies the violence and all the rest. Of it. But the club are okay to sell it, then? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's the, uh, yeah. the book that Cardiff City are selling is written by a Soul Crew hooligan. Tony Rivers, who we've seen active this season. You know, fucking stood there, like we went all to bang bang, they were gone, run back into the air score, like, funny as fuck. Far from being whiter than white, John Simmons is still trying to confront other supporters. We filmed him with other Cardiff hooligans, looking for Chesterfield fans at an away fixture in March. Yeah, come on, let's get back up here. I'm telling you, that's their pub up there, that's the pub. There were clashes before and after the game. <laughs> Di Thomas, the ex-Cardiff City footballer, was jailed after the Cardiff Leeds match. He'd run onto the pitch and thrown missiles. He's banned from football grounds for six years.